Welcome to the shop. Hope you're having a great day. All right, in the last video, we heat treated these and got them ready to finish the bevels on the jig. Are you ready? Here we go. Welcome back. I usually don't do this, but these three knives are finally up on my website and on Etsy. If you're interested, I'm not gonna show them, but you can go to my website and look. The link is up here or down in the description. Also, make sure to like this if you like it, dislike it if you don't, leave some comments, subscribe if you like this kind of content. Let's get to this. So I went ahead and marked this one. I often talked about this, why I leave my center line thick. I had to take more off of one side than the other. So this side is almost done and this side has about an eighth of an inch. I don't know how that's gonna be affected on the jig. So we'll start with the side with the eighth of an inch. Now I gotta give a big thanks to uh, Stalking Wolf. If you guys check out my live streams on Sunday, he's often on there and he gave me a great tip about going on the computer and, and looking up a bevel jig calculator. I think it's what it's called. It's, basically, you put in your dimensions and it'll tell you what angle you want to set. I haven't tried it yet. I figured I'd save it for the video. And if something messes up, it's my fault, not the calculator's fault. I see a lot of people doing stuff and they're like, oh man, this is wrong. But I'm here to tell you if, if I go put this in the calculator and something comes wrong, it's because it's something I did wrong. So, you know, that's, that's one thing as a knife maker or anything, start taking responsibility when you mess up instead of blaming your tools or something else. But I got my uh, Michitoya, my good calipers, which only come out for special occasions because uh, I don't want them getting ruined. <laughs> So it looks like, let me make sure we're zero here, yep. So it looks like I want my bevel at, we'll go with 1.36 inches. Yeah, so our bevel's gonna be 1.36 inches and our grind lines, let me get my good glasses on here so I can see. Getting old, I say this all the time, getting old sucks. <laughs> it looks like we're at about, 0 0.0032. So I'm gonna go, I'll be back. I'm gonna go put those in the computer and see where we're at. I put in, you know, 1.36 is from here to here. Then it says the size. Now I found two different calculators. One only asked for the bevel height and the thickness of the steel. That's not the one you want. There's one, I guess it's Wedge Tech or something. You also have to know the thickness of the bevel you want to grind to. Because the first one, I put in the two numbers, and it came up with 3.9, right? I went to the second one, and I put in this dimension, too, and it came up with 3.1. Now, that might not seem like a lot, but when you're grinding bevels, that could really mess you up. But if I'm wrong, please leave in the comments what you do, because, like I said, I've never used a jig before, but I know... 3.1 to 3.9 is a big difference. Even though it's only a point, you can still take the risk of messing up your bevels, or, or maybe not. I'm new to this jig thing, so that's why I'm doing this. I showed this to a friend, and he's like, man, why are you doing all that time-consuming stuff when most people just take a bolt and run it through it and clamp it down? And I said, you know, I don't know, because I don't know what I'm doing, that's why. <laughs> I'm still gonna use the bolts as kind of a guide. And also, I'm not gonna grind back to here. I'm, I mean, I'm only grinding the same place. And I'm gonna freehand free grind the rest. Just because I like my plunge lines to look, look a certain way, I don't think they can be accomplished on a bevel jig. You know, there's a lot of things you have to kind of learn when you're doing plunge lines that are swooping and stuff like that. Now, if you want a straight line like that, and that's fine. Also, I don't know how that calculator is going to change when I'm putting it at an angle. This is going to be the sacrificial knife, I guess. <laughs> we'll see. I might have to end up hand grinding it anyway. Got my bolt here. Got this just resting in the clamp on it. See, that's not even tight. That's just basically to hold that up. Now, I'm, I'm trying to figure out if 
keeping a sponge by the thing and pulling it once and hitting it with the sponge and pulling it and if that will be worse so let me go get a sponge and try that out like i said i'm just going to basically do the same thing over to the grinder <laughs> i take that back i forgot to set the angle <laughs> so i got this you know you can get a protractor or whatever as long as the one thing you got to remember wherever you set this you have to take 90 off that because your plane might be different so these things work great I'll try to find it on Amazon and put it in the description. It's an angle finder and they come in handy for all kinds of stuff. Like if you got an adjustable tool rest and stuff, you I've used these things hundreds of times. Let's get it. 3.1. Zero out here, see? It says 0.75, so we're not flat right here. So we have to zero that out and then come up here. 3.1. And this time I'm gonna remember to tighten these screws, these uh bolts. Last time I forgot. <laughs> 86.9. Yeah, see, I don't know if I like this, man. That's setting all these things up, tightening them up, all that. I could have had the bevel done already. They're supposed to be a lot faster for stuff and a lot more things, but I'm new to this. Maybe it's just my uh, stubbornness of freehanding that's getting in my way, but I'm trying to have an open mind. All right. Now to the grinder. <laughs> I wanted to weld together three spacers like this and drop it down. So, I, you know, it'd be an inch and a half lower. Maybe next week, you know. I, like I said, I want to do the hinges on this. I want to do that one. I got a few other welding projects. Bad welding projects. <laughs> I have to do so. Let's just get this started. I got a bucket right here with a sponge. I'm going to do like two passes. I'm not going all the way down to my line. I got a brand new 60 on here. I'm going to go 60, almost to the line, and then I'm going to hit it with a 120 to the line and see where we're at. Oh, wish me luck. Looks like I put in the wrong bevel, so we need to go up, which means we need to come in some. Ah. Let's come in just a little bit. So I think this might work for me, you know, instead of trying to hold the jig, I'm just letting the jig kind of hold the knife where it is. Uh, basically, I'm free-handed, but okay, we'll we'll, uh, we'll let that kind of slide. <laughs> Now, to me, it feels hotter, but I realized something. I'm using the back of my fingers. The back of my fingers aren't used to the same heat that the front of my fingers are, if that makes sense. I got blisters all over these fingers, so it's going to be hotter on the back. That doesn't mean necessarily that it's at too hot of a temp or whatever, but we'll see. See, that's one thing about the jig. I had this spot right here I couldn't get out. I had to put pressure down here where I wanted to get out. How do you do that with a jig? You know? Ah! <laughs> I, I'm trying to like this thing. I, I swear I really am, but you know, basically I'm freehanding. I couldn't get that spot out till I put my pressure right here and brought it out. You know, how do you change pressure Ah, okay, I'm repeating myself. <laughs> Now 
Now, I will say, whoo, that's a mighty fine look head grind. I guess that's the question. Yeah, that's the big question. Can you get this grind freehand? Me, I still struggle a little. I, I get close. That, that's the other question. Do I need to practice freehand more to get my bevels that perfect? Or, uh, I, you know where I'm going with this. <laughs> All right, let me do the other side. <laughs> All right, so one thing, make sure if you make something like that that has equal sides, make sure you put it on the right one. I put it on this second one. I was like, man, why is the knife back so far? <laughs> Got a little off there, but we're okay. And also, if you watched the last video, which I'll put up here, remember this jig came loose. So that's why I had that bad spot because it probably wiggled. So like I said, any mistakes or something, most likely is my fault. I didn't tighten that bolt the last time so I had bad spots in this. That might not be the jig. You might, we'll see. This one's pretty even so we'll see if it comes straight even without the pressure. I'm just gonna pull it through a few times to see what it does. And on this one, we're pretty much on the line anyway, so like I said, I'm just gonna hit it a few times and see where we go. So you see, we still have spots like this that aren't coming out, but I'm gonna have to put pressure here. And if, if something like that happened to you when you're just free, how do you put pressure if this wasn't sticking out? So we'll see. All right, so I was wrong. It hit it all. I didn't put any pressure on the knife. I just pulled it straight through. So like I said, that was my mistake from having the bolt loose or something last time. And down here, I probably grinded it too low or something. It seems like the jig does fix small problems though when you're not good at freehanding. But I highly suggest learning how to freehand because just like that mistake on the other side, if you used a jig and you didn't know how to do that pressure thing, you would just be out of luck and you'd have to grind the whole thing out. Even if you do use a jig and prefer a jig and all that, freehand grinding is a must too. You gotta have to learn. In fact, I'm glad that happened on the other side because that kind of proves the point about if you don't know how to freehand, what are you gonna do when you come into problems like that? I did that on purpose. <laughs> I love saying that for my mistakes. <laughs> All right, I gotta be careful. I don't know if you can see here. I'm right on the line, but I got this little facet. So uh, I'm gonna have to strike a new line because I don't want to go over that line. So I'm gonna put a 120 on here and I'm gonna strike a new line that's smaller, thinner, so we can get that out without crossing the line. Because man, we are right on that line. Woo, that's why I stopped. But yeah, so I was wrong. You know, it, it hit it all perfect. All right, brand new 120 on here. I definitely like the idea of hanging the blade over so I can see what I'm doing. Even if I had it up here or whatever, but now I don't have to drop this plate down, which I still might do, because it'd be nice to have it drop down, but I got it down to one line. I don't know if we can see that on here, if it's gonna show up. Let me see something. I don't know if it's gonna show up, but it's just one line right there. I'm gonna to try to split both sides as even as possible without hitting that line. That's why I always try to do two lines, but I kind of ran out of room here, so I'm gonna to have to take it down to one line because we're basically on the line down here, so. I mean, we can always make it smaller and fix our, our wounds. Not with the jig, we can't, but <laughs> anyway. Oh, <laughs> as a person that's stuck in his way in a freehand grinder, it's hard to accept something, so I I'm trying, I'm trying.
Oops. <laughs> I forgot to change the angle. And we went over. That's all right. We'll figure something out. We'll just make the swoop come up into there and make it a fuller. Uh, once I get it down, I'll go back and surface grind the flats a little bit, bring it up just a little bit, just to that tip. But, uh, yeah, we better make it even on the other side. A little bit right here at the tip it still needs, but. All right, I got the 60 back on here. Here's my line I'm going to go for because it goes above both sides. So, we're just going to. Give it a shot. I got the belt hung over so we can get all in there and see what we got. And just in case you haven't seen my other videos, see how these grind lines are straight up and down? When you hold them straight up and down like that, your grind is straight up and down like that here. So whatever you go by here will come out here. I don't care how hard you try, you're not going to get that done on a jig. <laughs> I can't find my my one with the switch, my magnet, and I'll tell you what, trying to get this on and off, sliding it and scratching it, because every time you put it on, you have to slide it off, which scratches your blade. I need to look on the floor or wherever it fell. I got that uh, power one. I think on the, I got Amazon links for it down below, but it's it costs more, but it's so much easier to flip a switch and just pull it off and not scratch your blade. Yeah, see. Ain't no jig doing that. <laughs> and see where I went too high here? I brought it down. You can see right there is a little corner where I messed up from the jig. I knew how to fix it because I know how to freehand grind. So even though I'm learning how to bevel grind or jig grind, you're always, you know, there's things that you might have to touch up and that's where freehand grinding comes in. And voila, see, ah, man, I wish I would have been paying attention. See how that messed me up? See how nice it swoops right here? That one little mess up. It might not, ah, it's driving me crazy. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, 
uh, I'm just going to have to deal with it. I have to bring this one up when I'm not so frustrated. Because all I'm going to do, if I keep going at it, I'm going to mess this side up. Then mess this side up and get back and forth. So I'll give it a little break. But uh, yeah, that's it for now. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. Free hand or bevel or both. I think you got to know both because uh, I don't care what kind of bevel you use. You're not getting this swooping plunge on a jig. All right, back to the bench. So let me know what you think. Uh, of course, I got the other knife I'm going to do and, and, and maybe it'll get better. And I, I do like the speed of the bevel once you get everything up. Like if I had 10 of these knives to do, man, doing it on the jig would be a lot better. Grind them all in. I think from now on, I'm going to freehand grind my preheat treat because they don't really matter as much. And then set my bevels because it seems like a lot of waste to set the bevel up and all that for something you're just going to preheat treat. So, and, and the bevels basically are just to take off material. They're, they're not important. If, you know, I've said that before. You can do them without the preheat treat bevels. Either way. But I just haven't found it to be efficient yet. Now, this is only my second time using it. So, I might learn how to set the angles better and, and adjust things faster and all that stuff. I might change my mind. But I will not change my mind about learning how to freehand grind. I don't care how many bevels you use, how fast it is, or whatever. Learn how to freehand grind also. Even if you use a bevel, take it off and learn how to do it freehand. When you come up with mistakes that you do, like all that stuff, all those mistakes I made with that jig, I went back and I fixed. Now, I still got some more work to fix it, but if I didn't know how to freehand grind, this knife would be ruined. Or it'd be a completely full flat and it, it wouldn't be what I want. Enough lecturing. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm pro freehand. But, you know, I'm also pre... I am pro whatever gets the job done the best for the individual. So whatever it takes, learn whatever you can. I finally got all the pictures up and all that on my website. Man, that's why I didn't get a video out last week because I was working on pictures and all that. So on my website... And on Etsy under Evader Knives, which I think that link's down there below. But I'll give you a secret. On Etsy, I charge a little bit more because they take a fee from me. So the website's the best way to go. Five knives up there. My shirts are up there. Amazon links, all that stuff. And it's all down in the description below. Also put links to the other jigs, how I built the jig and all that stuff. So thanks for watching. Hope you're having a great day. Like it if you like it. Dislike if you don't. Make sure to subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. Let me know what you do with your jigs or if you want to build a jig or where you're at in your knife making. All right, hope you're having a great day. And as always, take it easy.